there, friend. Welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. How are you today? It's always such a pleasure to connect with you, and thank you for being there. I wish I had the talent to tell you how much you mean to us. This morning, Stephanie came into my office. Uh, one of the viewers had sent a beautiful, beautiful note uh, to Bob DeAndre and telling how much he, she enjoyed homekeepers and all. And I appreciate that because you know what it is? It's encouragement. It's encouragement for everybody in this room right now. And we thank you for it. We thank you for it. You're going to love the program today. I have a very special guest. Her name is Cindy Stewart. She and her husband about eight years ago founded a church called The Gathering in Tarpon Springs, Florida. And uh, she has written several books, but we're going to talk about this one today, uh, God's Dreams for Your, for your Life. And uh, there's a lot of good material in here uh, that could apply to so many situations, and we'll try to cover as many as we can. And then I'm going to join Stephanie for a huge recipe. We're wondering if we have a bowl or a skillet big enough to hold it all at the same time. But it's called pesto chicken mac and cheese. Doesn't that make all your dreams come true? So we're going to put together. It's got a lot of ingredients in it, and hopefully we don't spill it all over the counter before it's over. So I'll join her in a second, but again, I want to pro uh, offer you this Promises for a Fruitful Life by Beth Moore. Now, most of you know what a brilliant communicator she is and writer. And there are people hurting from the situation in our country right now, and God's Word doesn't change. And so, some of these little chapters, and they have some of her writing as well, well as Scripture, when you feel as though your life lacks purpose, when you grow impatient waiting for your life to change, when you need rest, when you feel rejected or unloved, when you feel like you're getting too caught up in the world, when your daily struggles feel overwhelming. There's your stories in there. I truly believe that. And we'll send you this for any gift to the ministry. A couple ways you can contact us. They're right there on your screen, 1-800-229-0059. For your credit card, debit card, and also, uh, if you write to me, that address is Homekeepers Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And we'll get it right out to you. I, I can promise you it'll be a blessing. It's just, that's what the Word of God is. Isn't that right, Stephanie? Yes. Um, you know, I took my grandson out the other night, which is... Joy unspeakable. Let me put the milk in okay. here while you, here you go. chat, okay? I have butter and I have flour in here. I made a roux, mm -hmm. okay? The amounts will come up on the screen at the end. We have too yeah. many ingredients Look at all today this stuff. to go over. And, and you can get it for free. And you know what we were talking about? And I think about that every time I give our address and phone number. Mm -hmm. Well, he's young and he gets into the latest this, that, and the other. Talking about a cashless society. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to happen some point and I don't like it no because uh, how can I put how can I make fun Christmas gifts for my grandchildren with cash there's no cat you know I make them into different I don't think it's going to happen this year no no I mean so, ever um uh, I know it. that's what I give my yeah but um, I like make origami trees and I make different things out of the money to make it fun. All so right, just we're, we're going to put a stop to this. <laughs> There's not going to be in a cashless society because no, I've got stuff Stephanie to needs to make a what kind of tree? Origami, uh -huh. yes. What is you that? You know, where you fold money, where you fold paper into different things. Oh, you can make them. Boy, I wish you were my grandmother. Now, <laughs> are we going to use all this? Maybe we yes. better be careful. Yes. Okay. Okay, so. That was milk, and I have three cheeses. Mm -hmm. I have Parmesan, I have mozzarella, and I have Fontina. Oh, oh my. Oh, that Fontina. Yes. I don't think I'd ever had that. No. It's so delicious. I'm just going to let this thicken up for one second. I'm going to mm -hmm. put salt and pepper in. We have pesto. Oh, God, this so is going to be good. so good. And then we have chicken and spinach. And you could do any cheeses you wanted. This I mean, is a gourmet like. mac and, and cheese. I have not had lunch yet, so I'm hungry. Uh-oh. Well, this yeah. looks like it's going to make an awful lot. Yes. 
So I'm just letting. I mean, this stick looks up. like something you could fix for company. Oh yeah. And we don't usually think of macaroni and cheese. Yeah, have for this and then have a light dessert like we made. Uh, we made a peach pie yesterday when yes. she ate the. It was, the best, it was the best show ever. I hope you all get to see it. Look I for know the it, and it was real. Pie. Don't think it was planned. It was not planned. And no one's going to believe that ever. No. <laughs> it was that funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put the, all this cheese. This is not a healthy recipe, that's for sure. But it's going to be delicious, so I'll just have a small little plate of it for lunch. Well, um, it's all about portions. Boy, right? when I... Start looking at this recipe. I thought so. You're yummy. putting everything in it that's this in your refrigerator. This pan's probably not even gonna fit all that I need to put in. Oh, here. that's an awful lot of spinach. I think I'll stop there. Okay, okay. This is melting. And if I you want to take my dishes, that would I be I love amazing. pesto. I'm gonna put the pesto in next. Mm -hmm. So yummy. This is just jarred pesto. You could make your pesto if you this want. This has to be. Oh, look at this. The best pasta <gasps> of all pasta. This is going to be delicious. Okay. Do you ever do this when you're... Oh, be careful. It's hot, hot, yeah. hot. And I just want to taste it. I can't wait. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let me put the pesto in. Oh, my word. Oh, my. Look at that. Yeah, oh, this, is, this is definitely a dish. Of, and it has chicken company. in it, so that's mm -hmm. the healthy part. And spinach. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh goodness! Gosh. Look at the consistency at of that thing. Okay, we have a very important guest to get to. So yes, I we need do. To get and also, um, do you think you're going to use all that pasta? I won't, only because um, it'll make it too hard to stir. But we can put more in later. Yeah, you can. Let me get this wilted down. Anybody who's cooked very long, they. They know how to um, adjust, change things yeah. as they go along. Yeah, to your taste. To yeah, your... I'm not sure that all that pasta would fit in there. This is so good. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> oh boy. I mean, seriously, mm -hmm. I have to have the smallest little plate of this. I didn't realize how mm -hmm. cheesy, yummy yeah, this is. Yeah, I'm not sure that'll hold be. all that. So let's do some and then mm -hmm. we'll do more mm -hmm. when we're off of the. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, indeed. Yes. Have a little fresh salad with that and a, a very soft, kind of a parfait dessert, something very light. I would just light. have put a roll with this. I wouldn't even have a salad with it. Just a roll and some Parmesan on top. Well, doesn't a okay. good salad cover a multitude of sin, you know, well, as, as far as health? Oh, health? Yeah, health oh. wise. Okay. Okay, there you taste I'm it. tasting, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, we really made a mess here. Yes. Okay. Of course, it's delicious. Yeah. It's all the cheese. There cheeses. are no words. So And that pesto. Oh, I love so pesto. Good. I love pesto. Use that sometimes instead of your regular, you know, spaghetti sauce. Anyway, I think you'll want this recipe, mm -hmm. and we give them to you. Uh, there's several ways you can get it. That's coming up on the screen, so you choose the way best for you. And then you're going to meet Cindy Stewart. I think you're going to, she's going to bless your life. You'll be glad you tuned in, so stay right there. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. I'm so happy to welcome to Homekeeper Cindy Stewart. And I've heard a lot about you and your church because um, one of our employees here attends mm -hmm. uh, the church, Sharon, and has said some wonderful things, ab things about it. Um, and we're going to talk about your book. Is this new? New one? Yeah, it's pretty new. Yeah. Uh, God's Dreams for Your Life. I want to talk about your uh, church, though. Your title is Apostle. Mm -hmm. Now, how does that differ from Pastor. Well, the main difference is is the oversight. Mm -hmm. You know, a pastor takes care of their congregation, an apostle takes care of regions, states, a, a greater span of responsibility. Oh, okay. And uh, the church is eight years old? Eight years old. Mm -hmm. uh, 
is there anything different if I would uh, attend your church? Um, there is a, there's kind of a sameness in churches. How would yours be different if I could visit? Well, I think the big difference is, and I'm, I know a lot of churches do this, but one of our hearts is, is we want people to connect with the Word of God and connect with the tangible presence of God. Mm -hmm. we, we love worship and spending time really worshiping God and exalting His name. We think that's important to help people really see who God is. Mm -hmm. And we like to have the experience. He shows up and brings healing. We've had all kinds of breakthrough in family lives. When people experience God, you know their life's transformed. That is so important. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of churches, you know, they have the three songs and the prayer and the message and all. And um, it's so important to spend the time to be in the presence of the Lord. I grew up in a church like that. And um, I'm so thankful I'm so thankful that I did. It uh, teaches you that God is real mm -hmm. and that you, you can actually uh, commune with him. Um, now, this, the name of this book is God's Dream for Your Life. Um, who is it written for? Everyone who has a dream in their heart. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, God put that dream in your heart. And sometimes we're so busy doing what we think we're supposed to do mm -hmm. that we don't actually pursue God and let him unfold what he has for mm -hmm. us. So it really goes through a process of helping you partner with God and uncover those passions and dreams that he's put inside of you. Mm -hmm. I, um, as I said at the top of the show, I think there's so many things in here, bits and pieces that might be the answer that you're looking for, for a situation in your life. Uh, what does it mean to walk in your identity, spiritually speaking? I, I hear that a lot. I'm not sure I've ever had a really good uh, explanation. Well, you know, God created us in his image. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that we have a hard time really grasping because God is so amazing and wonderful and perfect. We think, how can we be made in his mm -hmm. image? Well, in order for us to have an identity, we have to understand who we're created after. We're created after his image and we're all image bearers for God. So when we find our spiritual identity, which the, the basic definition is that it is who we are in Christ. That is our identity. Nothing else is an identity outside of Christ. Mm -hmm. So taking that a step further, is your identity different than mine in Christ? No, our identity is the same in Christ, but how we live out our purpose from our identity mm -hmm. is different. We're all called to be children of God. We're all called to walk in his abundance. We're all called to have intimacy with him. Mm -hmm. But what that looks like in my life and your life is very different. Because, you know, if we all did the same thing, then we wouldn't be able to change the world to bring exactly. the kingdom here on earth. Mm -hmm. um, you have a chapter on imagination, and I think that is so important. But, boy, it's dicey. It is. Honey, I've been in this ministry all my life, and you can't <laughs> believe the stupid things that some Christians have imagined, mm -hmm. and they thought they were from God. Uh, I guess the basic thing is it's not going to be anything against his word. Right. But um, how do you really control that imagination? I mean, I've had people thought that, you know, God wanted to have that woman's husband. And that if you could think that, never, ever. Never, never If you're going never. out with him, don't do it anymore, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, but I have. I have encountered that. And, and it's strange. It is, and I have too. In learning how to have a sanctified imagination, mm -hmm. you know, God said he has set us apart. So we cleanse our imagination and we line it up with what the word of God says. And God has given us creativity. I mean, just look at this mm -hmm. place, even the recipe you made, it's creativeness. God's given us a, creative, a creativity, but he wants us to be able to connect our imagination of what that's going to look like with who he is. And like you said, outside the word, it can't be done. Mm -hmm. And part of it is we test what we are imagining that it lines up with 
who God is? Is it pure? Is it holy? Does it encourage other people? You know, we have to have the whole word, not just what suits us for what we're trying to accomplish. Preach it, sister. That, that, <laughs> Don't that get is, me started. That, that's, that's very true. Um, I came from a very musical family, and growing up, we had what you called the whosoever will choir. <laughs> Everybody could go sing in the choir. It's kind of neat, really. Uh, I mean, there'd be grandmas up there, and there'd be kids, and, uh, you know, everybody come to the choir. Then we got a little bit better organized, and uh, when I was married to a pastor who is uh, in heaven now, um, I think what you did in here happened to me, and I didn't know it, because I had a vision of a big music department mm -hmm. that functioned and, and that had quality and we do difficult things, and we do programs, and every bit of that happened. And I think without knowing it, understanding it, that image was there. Oh, that's such a great example, because what we can envision, we can become. Mm -hmm. That's what the Word says. What we behold, we become. And having that picture in your mind helps to draw you in taking the actions mm -hmm to be able to develop it, and you don't even know what you're doing half the time. Boy, you got that it's one right. It's true, because we're partnered with God. You partnered with God in it. It is, and I, I just was thinking about some of my viewers uh, as we're talking. There's so much talent out there, so much ability that God could use. Get a sanctified imagination. That's just priceless. It is, and I have a 100 Dream Challenge. It's free. You can go on my website and get it. But it helps you to brainstorm with God mm -hmm. and write these things down. And once you start writing these things down, then they will slowly develop mm -hmm. as you seek the Lord mm -hmm. to expand it for you. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have Cindy's website up. Uh, you might want to write it down because uh, there's some very valuable things in this book. She's written other books, but... Uh, you know, if you're kind of in the Tampa Bay area, you might want to uh, you might want to uh, visit the church. Um, I, I think that's an area that really you got to be careful in. Mm -hmm. Make sure too. that what you're imagining lines up with the Word of God. I to me, what you're saying is that you can do better and more than you think. Yes, and that's what the Word says. Because Ephesians three twenty. That's mm -hmm. right. That is very valuable, very mm -hmm. valuable stuff. Um, we hear, I think, uh, I've been a Christian so long and in the Christian world, we get these buzzwords mm -hmm. every once in a while, and usually they're pretty good, and then they can get ridiculous, but <laughs> we hear a lot about purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's more emphasis put on purpose to do rather than be. Mm -hmm. The be part is kind of hard sometimes. <laughs> it really is. And I think you can't have purpose without being. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we can move toward things, mm -hmm. but unless you find that time to be and, and spend time with the Lord and get to know Him, it's like anything. I mean, I've been married for almost 41 years. It's taken a long time to develop a real relationship with my husband. It mm -hmm. takes time. And like with the Lord, it takes time to develop. And you develop not by running everywhere, but by sitting down, spending time, asking him what's on your heart, what's in your word, and letting him grow that relationship with you. It's so important. You're right. And the, the doing part will probably come about better, more refined, um, more valuable if you spend the bee time. Right. And don't you think it's easier to do than to be? Oh, absolutely. I'm a doer. I mean, yeah. It's much easier to get through our list in the day instead of spending the list, first yeah. hour or hour and a half or hour, how much ever time you have, in just sitting with the Lord and mm -hmm. reading His Word and letting Him speak to you. Yeah, I do it every morning before I come to work, but I'm telling you, it's on the fly a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I, th I think in our society, that's just the way Americans run. Mm -hmm. you, you go to other countries and they have a whole lot different MO, you know, mode of operation. But um, I think Americans are just, <laughs> just on a treadmill. <laughs> 
it's, it's in the DNA. It truly is. And you know, one thing that I really work in, there's a time management sheet actually on my website too. The one thing I really help people do is find those spaces in their day that they can make room for the things that mm -hmm. are important to them, like their mm -hmm. relationship with mm -hmm. the Lord, like the, the passions of their heart. Mm -hmm. It's so important to put down my phone for a little bit, which is hard to do. I can say it's hard for me to do. Mm -hmm. Not look at Facebook or social media or the five texts I just got and just rest mm -hmm. and enjoy God. Um, I think our friends in Mexico and maybe South America, they have a siesta. You're kidding. Uh, but also, they'll take time for lunch. Mm -hmm. I eat lunch right in front of my computer upstairs. Mm -hmm. um, that probably is one of the greatest obstacles in the American church today. Yeah, it's think, just the busyness. I think for sure. Uh, you have a testimony in here by uh, just a man named Tom. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting. And he worked in a situation where he was not paid what he deserved. He felt undervalued and a lot of this. But the thing that stuck out to me was that he let go of the past mm -hmm. and things changed. And he, he became he became the boss, didn't he? Basically, yes, he one. became the boss. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he had an issue when he was 18 that uh, impacted his ability to get a job. And so he was definitely undervalued and he felt undervalued personally. And we just, he started coming to our church. He started going through some inner healing, which is important to get rid of our past mm -hmm. and went through our ministry school. We have a two year degree program, a ministry school. And his life, his family life Even began to be transformed. Yeah. And he had a vendor start recruiting him to come work for them. And he became, yes, a salesperson, and he brought their company from their particular region up to fourth in, in the nation just because he let God transform what hurt and replace it with the value that God had for him. What a lesson. I wonder how many of my viewers, something in the past is keeping them not only from a pleasant present, but a brilliant future. This man was able to support his family better. Mm -hmm. Much better. Instead of minimum wage, he got not only a, a great salary, but bonus. Mm -hmm. That's a huge transition. And God has that for all of us. You know, so many times the past weighs us down. Mm -hmm. And I was just working with someone the other day and they don't remember their victories. They always dig up the past of their failures. And how do we take the past and let it stay buried mm -hmm. and really celebrate the victories? Think about the last time you had a great victory and you decided, I'm going to spend the day just celebrating my victory. We usually Never. don't. <laughs> <laughs> you look at the word, the word they stopped and they celebrated. They had breakthrough. We don't take time to celebrate because we're so busy moving, oh, on, moving to on to the, on next, the next thing. thing. Yeah. And it's just learning to live out of our victories and learn out of our mistakes. Well, I think I think Tom's example there is so important um, because if our sins are in his sea of forgetfulness, who are we to fish him out? And if you're going to fish him out, it's going to hinder you. Yeah, it's going sure. to hinder you. It's going to hinder you. Just remember you. the cross is enough. It is enough. I, I've used this many times on the program, but I believe it. But those people who cannot forgive themselves you're saying the cross is not enough for me. Mm -hmm. It's enough for you, and you and you and you, but not enough for me. Well, I'm so thankful to give you the good news. The cross is enough for each of us. Absolutely. And we had one man who came to our healing rooms and he had been, uh, he could barely walk. He had cr uh, big crutches and he'd been that way for many years, 10, 15 years. He came in and he realized that he had not forgiven himself. Once he yeah. forgave himself, God healed him mm -hmm. right there. He held his crutches over his head and ran out the door and said, I'll be back. We never saw him again, but he was completely healed. Praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, there was a song we used to sing. Um, one of the lines was, in the sea of God's forgetfulness, that's mm. good enough for me. Praise Amen. God, my sins are gone. Amen. Gone. Okay, <clears throat> we're going to, uh, I didn't get to everything. You know, we want our purpose fulfilled today or tomorrow, but... Um, 
God really prepared people in, in the Bible. One thing that you really do um, pound on this is considering the next generation. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a great grandmother now, and, and I often think of what can I leave my children? Uh, they're serving the Lord, and I'll, but what can I, I want to leave them material things. I love them, they're mine. And uh, as we um, think about this whole thing, you need to get this book and you can get through the website. Um, you think, what can I leave the next generation? That's very normal if you love your family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I want to leave, I'm like you, I want to leave material things, mm -hmm. but I also want to leave them a country that follows God. I, I want to leave them that I did my part while I was here in order for them to have a better America, a better right. family where they will uh, just honor marriage mm -hmm. and honor each other. And I, I want to leave them really the heart of Christ mm -hmm. that they can leave to their children the to leave to important. their children. Uh, my dad didn't leave me a dime. My <laughs> um, But he left me Jesus. Mm -hmm. He left me a family altar that I grew up in. He left me a model Christian. You can't put a, you can't put a price on that. No, you can't. And I think that's the greatest gift you give our kids. And I always tell people, the battle for our children and our grandchildren, it's one in heaven. It's between us and God. We're going to contend until the breakthrough happens with our kids because we've got the maturity, we've got the responsibility mm -hmm. to uh, just battle for mm -hmm. everything God has for them. And you don't ever, ever, ever give up no, on never. your children or grandchildren. It's been great to have you. We are out Thank of time. You. But um, I certainly would like for you to come back. I just love to sit and talk about these things that are so important. But... Um, a lot, I think most of the prayer requests we get here are for children. There might be adult children in trouble, all these uh, things that can be so hurtful and so painful. But you serve a God who is much greater than your hurt, much greater than your pain. And the best thing you can do is leave them Jesus. Leave them a life uh, lived in front of them. Show how that Christian thing works because it'll come back to them. I promise you that. Please join me next time. Remember, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN programs and then on homekeepers.